Tau in bikini? Oh? Tau in bikini! Tau in bikini! Tau in bikini! Ah! Yeah! Diagnostics complete. War mode activate. There's no difference for bosses. Um, you know, the, the music like you're hearing now is different, but I'm talking about the battle itself when you're in a battle screen. It's just the same clip. And you just get so used to it, but... I mean, it is a good, it is a good clip, it is a good track, but it's just the same thing over and over again. Do 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 want want do do want want do 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 want want. He dies. It's over. I have been waiting for warriors of the Shining Force. Are you one of them? Great, you must help us. The Runafost army took our men to dig in the quarry. They're looking for a weapon of the ancients, a laser eye. Diane can lead you there. If Xylo were sane, he could surely help you. If you're going to the quarry to rescue the men, you can count me in. Diane joins the Shining Force. Yeah. But she won't be in my party yet. I'll be at headquarters. I can only take 11 other people plus me. If Xylo were sane, he could surely help me. The Runafaust army poured something into Xylo's drink. It made him crazy. We had to lock him up to protect ourselves. Xylo is a werewolf that you get next battle. Not this one. It's the last battle before Xylo, and he's freaking awesome. Xylo is inside, but he's been driven mad. Only Lunar Dew can save him. And I can't go in there. I try, but I cannot go in there. So I can only take 11 party members plus myself. And uh, had to send some people home. I sent Gong home. And I sent Ken home one of the nights. Master, we have found it! The laser eye at last! <laughs> this is the end of that cursed shining force. Get rid of those men from Boostock. They are of no further use to us. Exterminate them! Alert, intruders! What? The Shining Force? Stop them. We must have time to remove the laser eye. Okay, take it away, Tactician Max. Where are you, Tactician Max? Ah, I'm here. My video feed is not working at the moment. Because of the powerful, powerful magics of from emanating from the laser eye is creating sort of a EMP effect. But you still have the audio. Ah yes, for this quarry battle, you must first go take out the skeletons then use the bird men and bird woman to get the archers then go on and you will eventually get to the wizard in the south do this and follow my strategies and you will always win yeah oh man tactician max his advice is always so strategic and just awesome oh man it's like I know exactly what to do and how to win. Every time, man. Every time. Alright. So anyway. Um. Yeah. The two skeletons first. Um. This battle is pretty tough because you're pushed into corridors where you have limited movement and mobility. So 
you end up, a lot of characters end up not being able to be used because they're just in too tight a space. So the Birdmen come in very big handy in this battle because they can go anywhere. They can fly, they have really good movement, and they can go where no one else can go because they can fly. So with that, you can basically use them like snipers. Come in, you kind of swoop down and assault the weak archers and the weak priests. Um, so yeah, in this battle, they have healers, which are really annoying. They have a lot of HP, and if you don't focus on the healers first, they'll just keep them going forever. So uh, first battle with healers, and you definitely want to try to take out the healers first. Although I guess in a way you can farm experience because they'll keep healing the guys that you're trying to fight. <laughs> so in a way you can farm experience that way, but if you want to win, you got to take out the healers. Everyone knows them, them healers, you got to take them out. Um, unfortunately, Tao ends up dying. Spoiler, but it, that, that was my only casualty. Not too bad of a fight. So as you can see with the bird men, well like one's a bird woman I guess. I think Amon's the bird woman and Valvoroy's the bird man. But as you can see, I kind of swoop in. You know, you kind of go to an inaccessible part of the map where no enemy can hit them. And then you suddenly swoop down and go for the kill on weak enemies like those archers. Because the archers are kind of deadly, um, they can snipe. but. They're, they, they're not very good on defense. They're kind of glass cannons like a mage or a wizard. So, definitely helpful to use them that way. You basically put them into position where no one can get them and then swoop in for the kill because they, they both have really good movement. Um, the trade-off is they're not terribly powerful, but they're like powerful enough that they can hurt weak defense enemies. So... I think they're very valuable just because of that ability to kind of swoop in and go for the kill. Now after this battle we get the werewolf Zylo and he's one of the best characters. He's got extremely good offense um, and de defense is okay. Not not like Gortz um, and not like uh, uh, Luke's but he has some of the best offense in the game. Very powerful werewolf. So it'll be, it'll be nice to start getting some of the characters that'll end up being in our party until the end of the game. Because, yeah, Xylo pretty much guaranteed to be one of the permanent 11 members of the party. Woohoo! Arthur gains a level with this. We want to keep working on Arthur. Uh, it does help that in the shops, uh, I, I, I don't show any of the shops. I wanted to keep that out of these videos. They're long enough as it is, in my opinion. But in the shops, they have these power spears that are the most powerful weapon at the moment for the knights. And they also have ranged abilities, so that really helps Arthur make levels because as I've mentioned before, Arthur is the most powerful knight in the game in the late game when he's promoted to a paladin. Um, much better than the other knights. Uh, and he's kind of weak at first, but just you gotta keep working on him. And he also knows magic. He'll he'll be able to do like Blaze 2 and Bolt 2 as a, as a paladin, which is pretty awesome. I don't think any other knight has magic abilities. So you definitely want to work on him. <clears throat> And <laughs> those priests are annoying. And it's annoying in this battle because it's hard to get at them because of the tight spaces. But you definitely want to prioritize for the healers or you're going to be there a while. 
Those healers are so annoying. <laughs> you definitely want to... And unfortunately, unlike your healers, it seems like they have plenty of magic points, so... They can heal probably twice as much. Like, for example, Chris at level 5 has 15 magic points, whereas I think the, the Dark Priest had, like, 25 magic points or something, so... You gotta prioritize taking them out, because... They'll be able to heal quite a bit with that much magic points. So... <laughs> So I made some risky moves in this battle, and part of this game is, you know, taking risks. Like, ge generally speaking, you don't want to position your forces where they're vulnerable to counterattack. But sometimes you go, you take risks, and, uh, like for example with Tao, Tao ended up dying because I decided that it was better to use Tao's Blaze 2 magic on two enemies rather than just doing blade because I could have done blaze one on one enemy and be safer but I thought the opportunity was powerful to hit two enemies at once with blaze two and I didn't have any other casualties and I did well in the rest of the battle so it might have been worth it to sacrifice Tao by leaving her more vulnerable um, you know by using that blaze two but it left her more vulnerable to counterattack and she did end up dying but those kinds of decisions um, can turn the tide of the battle you know sometimes you need to think like it's okay to sacrifice one or two of your guys if it means that you win the overall battle you win the war you, know, you might lose the battle but you win the war and sometimes suicidal missions can be beneficial um, it's just it's just these kind of thoughts you got to have now now this game I'd say relative to other tactical RPGs, it's fairly simple. Um, you basically can you, you just basically attack or use magic or heal. Like you have less options. Other types of games like this, you generally will have more options. But there's still there's still some good strategy in, in this in these games, and um, and you definitely if, if you're you know if you're good, you'll have fewer casualties, and if you're bad, you'll have more casualties. And, You'll have less money, and you might have to grind more and stuff, but... Definitely helps to, like any other skill, you hone your skill playing these games. You kind of learn um, what works and what doesn't. And sometimes you take you take calculated risks sometimes. And I think, I think uh, here was where I took a risk. Yeah, so I wanted to hit those two Dark Priests. Oh yeah, that's a good channel on Twitch. Life Begins at 8-Bit. <laughs> Definitely a good channel to check out. This guy's like, um, he's doing like 40, I guess he turned 40, um, or he turns 40 like in another year. He's 39 now, and he, he basically like every month is like another year of video games. So he started out with like 1983 as like the first year, and the 40th year will end up being next year and every month is like a, a year of video games so he started out with like reviewing video games from 1983 which I mean back then that was before the regular Nintendo so that was still like Atari and Commodore 64 days back then because the the regular Nintendo Entertainment System was 1985 I think so before even the NES days I, at that time I was only two I was born in 1981 so very interesting, and uh, he's up to uh, 2010 now. This month is 2010 for him, so he's reviewing games that aren't that old, like from 2010. 
So re really cool channel on Twitch. Life begins at 8 bit. Go check him out. And I think, um, see, Twitch, I don't know if you guys ever use Twitch at all, but Twitch by default, I think it only keeps your broadcast for the last 14 days. So you have to make sure you archive them yourself. But, um, and there's a way you can export them and everything, but he, he, he uh, he plans to upload everything eventually to YouTube. I, I think if he did that, he'd have a decent channel because some of his streams are like three, four hours long where he reviews all video games from a different year and stuff. And it's a great channel, so on Twitch. So um, I think if he upload, eventually he'll upload it to YouTube. It, it'll it'll be a good channel, I'm sure. So anyway, that's that. Wrapping up this battle. Um, the next battle is kind of a slog fest battle. It's a huge map and rough terrain. Definitely going to be speeding through parts of that battle. But then the battle after that, Battle 11, is the famous laser eye battle. That'll be a fun one. I'll try to make it extra fun. Oh, yeah. Here is where I made that tough decision, where I was like, well, I could hit one or I could hit two, and I decided it was better to hit two. And was it a wise decision? I don't know. But I mean, I ended up finishing the battle with only one casualty, and that was Tau. Because, um, you know, like, and Tau's at 4 HP right now, so the next hit would basically kill her. But those are the kinds of decisions that you make, like, you know, do I retreat and get healed? Do I launch an attack on two with Blaze 2 that's going to damage more but leave me more vulnerable? Or do I try to retreat some and use Blaze 1? I mean, these are the kinds of decisions that you have to make. Um, and worst case scenario, if you fail, you, you lose some of your gold. I forget how much. It might be half your gold, which is quite a bit but you retain all of your experience. Your experience is always retained, whether you die or not. You retain all your experience, so the next time you go into a battle, you it will be easier because you will be stronger. And the enemies never change. They're always the same enemies for a given battle. And the experience you get, I think, varies on the relative level of the enemy and the, and the level of your troops. But I do know that the most experience it seems like you can get which is generally for killing an enemy is 48 experience. I've never seen anything above 48 experience. Every 100 experience you gain a level, so... You could kill two enemies and then do something else and you'd gain a level.
so I had a hard decision but I decided to leave that skeleton for somebody else to finish off because the skeleton only has one HP so it's a perfect target for a healer to go whack it and do hardly any damage to it but getting 48 experience and I kind of I kind of I don't really like that aspect of this game that that deaths are just worth so much more experience because it, you know, you end up trying to save enemies to farm out deaths so that you'll get more experience. And, you know, you, you want to just kill the enemy quickly and not have to worry about it later. Because the longer the enemy stays around, the more damage it can do. But, as you can see, Anri gained a level. So it was worth it to save it for her. I thought it was more important that she gain a level. You always want your mages to be strong, and I've, I've said that many times, but mages are very powerful in this game. Nothing else has area effect that can hit multiple enemies at once like, like a mage can. Uh, there's no regular attack that I'm aware of that, that can hit multiple enemies. It's only magic attacks that can do that. Not only that, but I, as I mentioned before, magic attacks never miss. I've never seen a magic attack miss. I don't I don't think magic attacks ever miss. They they can critical hit, but they never miss. Alright, we're coming on to the end. The uh the the master mage um has freeze spells and is generally more powerful than the dark mages. Um the master mage is the primary target. Once you take out the master mage at the bottom, that that's it, the battle's over. There's a lizard man down there. The Lizard Man has really good offense. Like he can basically cut any anyone, even those with high defense, to pieces with his awesome attack. Very high offense. Um, but they don't have terribly good defense, at least. So even though even though the Lizard Men have good offense, they don't have the best defense. So they're a little bit glass cannon-ish. De definitely wanna if you're gonna go after the Lizard Men, try to take them out before they can hurt you. There was a lot of thinking here, but I decided to kind of put the birdmen, position them kind of up there where they couldn't be hit so that they can swoop down later. See, it's not its not just that the birdmen are awesome, not just because they can go anywhere, but because they have really good high movement. So they can kind of suddenly surprise and flank enemies and stuff. They're, they're basically like the true definition of cavalry in war, because cavalry can move fast. So, because of their fast movement, they can come, go around to different positions and flank enemies and stuff. Kind of come in suddenly and go after the weak enemies, like the uh, mages and the archers and stuff that are weaker. And of course, you got you got to get those priests. Those priests will just heal up like crazy. So, 
always make the healers the priority unless you want to fight forever. I think Arthur gained another level. Good. Arthur went got gained two levels this battle. Went level four to level six, so. Gotta keep it up with him. He's the best knight. Um, there's other good knights, and we'll we'll get another one. I think one's called Pell. Uh, that you will get in the laser eye battle. But I'm excited for the next battle because I'll get Zylo the werewolf. I'll probably have a try to work on my werewolf voice. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Like Luke, Luke has like one of the best defenses, and look look what he did to Luke. That lizard man's no joke. <laughs> that lizard man likes to chop. Um, I, I made the decision just to kind of go straight for the Master Mage and end the battle. Sacrificing some potential experience gains, but that Lizard Man's no joke. And I think there's going to be a few in the next battle that uh, I might have to grind even because they're, they're powerful. And uh, yeah, those Lizard Men will give me some trouble later. But I decided to go straight for the objective, which is to take out the Master Mage. Once the Master Mage is done, that's it. Battle is over. Woohoo, that's it. Battle is over. Yeah. I'm not going to read this text. Because I got the recording thing in my way and it's too much effort. <laughs> but they're, they're unearthing the uh, laser eye. That'll be a good battle. Laser eye is a fun one. It's actually a really easy battle if you just <laughs> let, let, let the thing do its own work. and you, You'll see. I won't spoil anymore, but it's a fun, fun battle. So, we have an important secret item in here. You've got the Moonstone, which will trade for the Lunar Dew, which will cure Xylo and make him a werewolf that'll actually listen to reason. But there's a secret item here, very important, very important item that will cause Tao to lose some of her clothing. She'll, her sprite will wear a bikini, which you saw in the beginning. I'm not going to repost it, but you'll saw it. It's called the, uh, Sugoi, let me see if I can pronounce this right. Sugoi Mizaki, Mizoki, I don't know. It's Japanese for amazing swimwear. So I'm putting it. If Tao, if if Tao has the amazing swimwear in in her inventory, her battle, sp her sprite will change. Now it doesn't change the appearance of when she's in the battle screen, unfortunately. But her sprite will look like she has a bikini. All right, stay tuned, stay informed. Yeah.